All right, so a couple of the rules. Um, main door, three foot. Um, bedroom doors. Two foot thick. And bathrooms. Are going to be two foot four. Okay. This is minimum. And this is minimum. Okay. Uh, doors go in increments of two inches. And Grace, you have questions? So I was just going to get to that. So great thing about closet doors, there are no rules. Okay. Um, doors that you are going to pass through, minimum two feet. Okay, so if you're going to walk through a door, it's got to be a minimum of two feet. They make doors, if I'm going to give you a real quick little list, and when I say they make doors, they make doors whatever size you, you, you want. You can call and tell them that you need a door that's one foot five and a quarter, and they'll make it. They're going to charge you out of the nose for it because it's a custom piece of millwork. But if you go to Home Depot and you said, hey, we all walk past that door aisle in Home Depot, you guys probably just blow right past it, never walk down it, right? They have stock size doors. So I'm going to list out the stock size doors. And when I write my dimensions like this, this means one foot six inches. Okay. Um, 2 0, 2 4, 2 6, 2 8, 2 10, 3 0. And then we get into double doors. So I'm just going to put a D on it. And we've got a, a D30, a D40, a D50, and a D60. Okay, those are your standard size doors that you can go to Home Depot and purchase. Um, most of the time they stock all of those. You'll see that there's there's certain ones missing, like a one foot eight, a one foot ten, they don't really make those, a two foot two door, they don't really make that. Uh, but once you get to two foot four, they pretty much incrementally go up to three foot. Uh, bigger than three foot, custom, right? So three foot two, three foot six door, those are going to be custom doors. Um, and then, like I said, you get into these double doors. Height, just for 3D, um, uh, standard door height. I know I'm writing a lot of stuff on here. But standard door height is going to be six foot eight inches. Okay, do they make them taller? Yep. Can you get a seven foot door? Yep. Can you get an eight foot door? Yep. Are they expensive? Yep. Right. So they're not the stock size doors that you're going to be able to purchase. So I've got this. Um, this is just notes for you guys. You guys don't really need to keep this on your drawing. This is really what I want you guys working on. Um, and then what I can do with this stage is I can start just blocking this out. I don't really know what I what, what I really need where yet. You guys should have what we call the program established. That was that list of rooms that you're going to use, right? We said that maybe there's a, we know there's a stairwell. We know that we need some sort of entry space. We know that there's a kitchen. Um, uh, ba -ba -ba -bum. Could we use, yes, Elijah, you could just use a curtain if you wanted to do that as a closet door. I'm sorry, guys. The chat's really hard for me to see from over here. It's on this monitor. If it's the wrong way, and I can't turn it. Um, we've got, um, obviously, a kitchen, somewhere to eat, right? And then we have bedrooms and bathrooms and then some sort of living space. So those are that's kind of our program. And if I was going to go with this, and this is a very basic layout, I know I'm going to need a stairwell, right? So that's one of the things that I have to make sure that I accommodate space for. And stairs, um, stairs mess you up, to be quite honest with you, right? So, so steps, you, you got to think about where you get on a set of steps and where you get off a set of steps, right? And so I want you guys to think about elevators, for instance. And we're not using elevators, so no elevators in our micro living houses. But have you guys ever been on an elevator? You walked in the, the, the door to the elevator and you faced the door and then you got to your floor and it said ding and all of a sudden the elevator opened behind you? or on one of your other sides, right? And you're like, that was weird, right? Because we all get in and turn around and face the door, right? That's just natural. That's what we do. And then it opens up somewhere else, okay? So that's called a that's called a multiple in, multiple out elevator. Um, 
stairwells, we kind of have to think about the same thing. Where do we want to get onto the stair? Where do we want to get off of the stair, right? And you, know, you don't want to go down a set of steps and basically run into a wall, right? You want to turn it into a room or get that to make you look at something, right? So um, you'll see a lot of houses that have stairwells that kind of go down. Um, So you'll you'll see um, you'll see a lot of houses that have stairwells that do this, right? You got stairs coming down, but when you get to the bottom, what they typically do is they actually put one step here and maybe one more step here, right? They do this. This is called a landing, and they do that so that you come into the room. You could have just as easily moved the stairwell back just a little bit added two steps up here and eliminated these two. But that means you would come down the steps and you would, this would be your last step. So where are you facing? Literally you're facing the wall. And that becomes like a bad design, right? Because like you get off the steps and you got to instantly turn, right? So what we do a lot of times is we build these, uh, we build these landings into the bottom of the steps. So we come down, force you to turn, while you're still on the steps and then you're in the room. Okay, so stairs are one of these things that we can we can help direct traffic intentionally. So they honestly have to be thought about well. And so if I look at this, what I need to know is where my common point is. This and this are common points. So I know if I put my stairwell here and aim down, my stairwell is gonna start somewhere here and come down this way. I got to really think about this as as two separate floors that are laying on top of each other. And the reason why I said you may want to do this on two separate sheets of paper is quite simply you can stack these. And if you hold them up to a light or hold them up against a glass window, you'll be able to see where your stuff below or above is. Okay? So with that you like that? I use my scale. Got a nice clean rip all about that last little bit. You just use your ruler. What's that? All right. They're, they're impressed by my ripping skills and I thought I did a bad job. All right. So, um, so we're going to, we're going to continue with this and I'm just going to simply show you how I would process this again. I would be using pencil normally, so this is going to look really, really sloppy. You guys should be able to do this a lot lighter than I would. But I sort of, I sort of do bubbles still, right? Just because I like, it's easy to do a free flowing circle than it is for me to kind of go, I want this wall. Like I just kind of think about my spaces. So if this is my, my upper, my upper level, I got to think about what I want to use that for. So if this is my entry, I'm instantly thinking most people that come into my house or everybody that comes into my house has to come in this way. So what would I want up here? Okay. And maybe in this instance, maybe I want my like gathering area up here. I want my living room in this space. I want it just to be like an entry and living slash sitting area. And maybe because I don't want guests to come downstairs, because that's where the bedrooms are, that's where it's really private area, right? I'm kind of separating the public and private area. Maybe I want to put like a powder room up here, right? Just a little two-piece bathroom to, to satisfy at least the, the, the restroom part of this, right? So I'm going to pretty much go, may, maybe I've got like living area, maybe I could squeeze a little bathroom in the corner, and then maybe I'm going to allocate this area to steps, right? So I kind of have an idea of how I want this to, to work out. And maybe this doesn't end up here. Maybe this ends up here, right? I, I haven't really made this solid yet. And that's why we're going to go through like these sketches as opposed to doing this all in Revit. Or worse yet, if I had you guys doing this in sketch up, think about how hard it would be if you designed your bathroom here and you go, you know, I really don't like it here. I'd love to move it here, but it's way too much work to do in SketchUp. So what happens? You guys are like, ah, the heck with it. I'll just leave it there, right? 
For me to move it from here to here with a pen, really simple, right? Or a pencil, right? I erase it and I draw it in over here, okay? So let's think about what I want this space to look like. So maybe I'm thinking this is stairs and then I'm gonna go, okay, down here, I kinda wanna direct them into the room. So maybe I do what I was thinking here and I do a staircase that kinda looks like this. And remember, they're a little bit, we can make them a little bit shorter. If you think about what we were doing in Revit, we had those like more of a ladder type feel. So I'm thinking something like that would be my, my, my staircase, right? So I'm going to come down that way. And then what else do I need up here? You know, wow, a, a coat closet would be really, really nice to have towards the top of the steps, right? And if I think about this, this would just be railing. I could make it a wall, right? Because because of the height, right? This is going down and I wouldn't bump my head down here. So maybe I could do something over here instead of my bathroom being here. Maybe I could do my bathroom. We could utilize this space. And so this is where my scale is going to come in line. Um, now, I didn't draw walls in here, right? So wall thicknesses are going to play a factor. These are six inches thick. At this point, I'm just trying to get my concept down, and I'd use Revit to solidify this, okay? So I'm going to put in something here. Maybe this is 5x5-ish. Five five so I'm somewhere in this range. And I can do... I don't want to put the door directly here, because when I walk in my front door, I don't want people to instantly see a toilet. Right, and if I think about this as like a, a home decorator type situation, when I come in the front door, I could have like a little table sitting here with some flowers, a mirror hanging on the wall, a photo hanging on the wall, something to dress that little foyer up a little bit. Maybe I'm gonna bring in my door on this side, somewhere over here. And then I'm gonna utilize this area. Um, I've decided that a closet's really not gonna fit now that I'm looking at this because if I put a closet here, there's just not enough room to squeeze through. If I put it over here, it's just starting to eat into my living room area. So maybe I'm content with this, right? And if I think about this, you know, this is the wall that I can put windows on, right? So if I was thinking maybe I could put some decent sized windows, maybe I do this as a whole wall of windows, right? So I'm just gonna quickly draw in where I want some glass because I can't get them, um, I can't get windows here and I can't get windows here because there might be another house butting up against it. And then I'm gonna make sure that this works, right? So if you think about it, right, you guys lay on a couch. So it kind of gives you an idea of how long a couch is. You know, you're six foot, five foot six, somewhere in that range. Couch is a little bit longer than you. So you can kind of predict that a couch is gonna be about six and a half, seven feet. So you can use your scale here and kind of go, well, how big is a couch? So if I'm saying it's about seven feet, this is going to be a couch. Okay, maybe I got some sort of little end table happening here. And then we're going to put some sort of love seat on this side, right? And you guys can see beautiful, beautiful artwork. Gorgeous, right? Do I have it laid out? I've got a bathroom. I've got stairs. I've got a living room. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this thing and I'm going to line it up. And I know you guys cannot see that at home. And you guys can't see that here in person, but maybe you can see a little bit through there. Um, what I'm going to do at this point is I'm simply just going to trace my staircase. Everything else I don't care about. The stair is really the only thing that I'm worried about getting it down to the lower level in the same spot. And then from there, I can start going, okay, what do I need down here? I need a kitchen. I need two bedrooms and I need a bathroom. Okay. And then that's where I'm going to kind of start going, well... I wouldn't want to come in to the bathroom, so that's X. I really don't want to come into a bedroom, so those are X. What has to go here? Just inherently, I've got to make my public space, my kitchen, 
So maybe I'm going to try to squeeze in my kitchen in this area. And then maybe I split this, right? So maybe I go bedroom, 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 and then we can get a bathroom over here. And then maybe the kitchen area. I hate that the bathroom is close to the kitchen because nobody likes the, where you eat, right? It's, we don't mix things, so we got to figure something else out. So maybe bedroom goes here, and maybe I figure out how to squeeze the bathroom in the corner. Bedroom, bedroom, bathroom kitchen looks good enough to me and then this is where I come back with my scale and I start going well how big does a bathroom need to be okay and so quite simply if you if you search up bathroom um at home you guys probably have parents that have a really nice master bathroom somewhere right there might be a really nice master bathroom which is a lot different than what our our, our we're going to say kids room kids bathroom secondary bathroom uh, so let's talk real quickly about a secondary bathroom. I'm probably going to design half of your secondary bathrooms right now, okay? Quite simply, we call it a standard three-piece bathroom. You guys may have been in one that looks like this. It's about seven foot eight long. About. Can be eight foot, can be a little bit longer. And it's about five foot wide. And it's quite simply that simple. And I'm just going to draw this really, really quickly. You guys will all know what this bathroom is. If it's not in your house, it's in your friend's house. But I guarantee you guys have all been into this bathroom. All right. Tub. Shower head. Toilet. Vanity. Toilet paper holder. Towel bar. And door that always hits the towel bar if you swing it open too hard. Okay, did I describe anybody's bathroom? <laughs> anybody's secondary bathroom? What was that? You have to reach all the way across, right? Okay, okay. So that is a, um, hey, that's my bathroom, Elijah says. So, um, it doesn't, it's moved down just enough. Well, the reason why is they didn't want to put it over here. And the reason why they didn't want to put it there in your case is simply because it cost them more money because it would be a wet location uh, light switch. And wet location, because your hand, but hands are wet. <clears throat> right? We don't want to do that. So they, they moved it on the other side. And, and it's, I, it's safe, but it would have cost them $8 to put the right kind of light switch in, in the right location. It's very typical, like, Production builder crap that they pull. No, no, I mean, oh, yeah, that's not uncommon. You, you, if you only found fast food containers in your, oh, no, because normally you find buckets full of human feces in cavities in your homes because contractors are. I mean, if you don't give them a portage on, they got to go somewhere and they try to hide it somewhere and they hide it in your sump pumps or your, so it can be, yeah, Elijah goes, what? Yeah. Um, so uh, that is a, a very efficient little, little bathroom. Uh, there are simple variations of this. Okay. Uh, quite simply. And I'm just going to kind of sketch these really quickly, you know, get tub. We turn the we turn the toilet this way and put the vanity this way, and we bring the door in this way. Right? We can do that. That's one variation. Um, another variation, which is a which is a very nice variation, to be quite honest with you, it's a little bit larger. Um, another variation would be to do what we call as like kind of a, a, a Jack and Jill type bathroom. 
So we'll put a we'll put a, a door or a tub there. We'll put a toilet here. We'll swing a door either in or out, depending on the size of the door. And then out in this space, we'll actually do a double vanity and we'll bring a door in on each side. Okay? This is good for this is good for like two siblings to share a bathroom, right? You can go in here and do your things. While well, somebody can be out here brushing their teeth, fixing their hair, doing their makeup, right? So this is a very convenient bathroom. Um, bathrooms are typically more important to the ladies than they are to guys. We've had this discussion before, right? But versus hair products and makeup versus what, what, you know, guys do. And that's literally, we're lucky if we run a comb through our hair and leave the house, okay? So... Uh, these are very, very convenient. If you guys share a bathroom with, with a sibling, you guys would probably really appreciate this as a as a design for your bathroom. Um, and then these things just simply get more elaborate and more space filling as you go. Um, you can do, you know, you can, if there is a situation, if you had something like this, where you had the, the, the tub, the toilet, the vanity, you could have one of these situations where you had to clip the corner and get a door in on the corner, okay? So if I wanted to just simply clip a corner to bring it in on a 45, and that's probably where I would end up going with this design, to be quite honest with you, just looking at how I'm trying to make these things flow, better and better bathroom. So I would probably come up with some sort of like buddy bath design that had a clipped corner if I was going to piece this together in a really, really quick little design, I would probably end up doing my spaces something like this and maybe have some sort of other space down here. Maybe that I'd figure something out for this. Maybe this could be house storage or something because this room would get exceptionally large. But what I could do is I could do this little like, um, triangle of hallways and it's or triangles of doorways in a sense i'd swing the bathroom door out swing the bedroom doors in and i'd make this my bathroom in some way okay so um great thing about design um unless unless things just physically don't fit okay they're not considered wrong the only other way they can be wrong is if they're against code, okay? If they're against code, they're wrong. It, 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 there's no way I can avoid it being... Um, if it violates code and health safety, it, it'll never exist, okay? If it never exists, the sketch never existed, or the drawing never existed, or the design never existed. I.e., if you do something that, that falls under that wrong category, it simply is a zero, okay? Not, not to be mean about it, but it, it literally doesn't work. If it works and it checks all the boxes, there's no wrong answer outside of that. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. The only way you can get it wrong is if it doesn't exist, and it doesn't exist if it doesn't meet life safety, right? That's the most important thing. Life safety says no. You guys have all probably been somewhere and you've been like walking through, like maybe you went to a friend's house and you're like, oh, can I use your bathroom? And they're like, yeah, sure. It's right down the hallway. And you go down the hallway and you open a closet door and you're like, that feels like that should have been the bathroom and it wasn't, right? Or it was a bedroom and you're like, that feels like it should have been, probably because that should have been the bathroom, right? So, so was the design wrong? No, it just wasn't what you expected it to be. It wasn't something that you liked, right? You guys have all seen houses that you like the exterior. Are they wrong solutions to the problem? No, they're not wrong. They're just not, again, this is all subjective, right? So as long as you, I hate the word, use, I hate to use the term check the boxes, right? But as long as everything fits and you get it all in, the, the design can't be wrong. Doesn't mean that it's a great design, doesn't mean that I'm going to like the design. Doesn't mean that you're going to like the design. It's not wrong. It could just be a bad design, which we see that all the time. We, we literally see bad designs all the time. Um, 
I've had to do a few bad designs in my career, not by choice. Like clients were very, very specific. I want this. And I'm like, no, you don't. <laughs> they're like, yeah, I do. That's what we want. And I'm like, no, you don't. And they're, they're adamant about it. And you just go, okay, then we can do it, right? Hopefully the client's happy. If they're not, you don't say, I told you so. When you get back to the office and you have that conversation with your with your colleagues at, at lunch, you go, I told that fool they weren't going to like it and they don't like it, right? And so, again, that's why we get paid for the expertise that we do, right? We can visualize things a lot quicker than a lot of people. Um, so that is um, – that is, this is where you guys should be working to. Now, I've done this a time or two in my life, so this comes very natural and very easy to me. You guys should not be able to do this in one shot, to be quite honest with you. This is, a, this is an iteration, okay? This could be 10 of these. This could be three of these. This could, you may get one and you're like, Eh, it checks the boxes and I'm okay with it. If that's your feeling, then, then architecture is going to be really difficult for you, to be quite honest with you, because you should really want to refine and go, you know, I, I like this, but I really don't like that if I'm sitting on the couch, I, I'm going to be looking into this bathroom. Like maybe I can figure out a different way to do this, or maybe I can put some sort of blind or wall in front of it, or maybe I do this on a clipped angle to where, right? So, Maybe I would reprocess this and, and start to think about how you're going to live in this home, right? And that's really important. It, it is your design. It's your design. So Grace asked if the couch just had to be facing the center. No, no. It literally and, – and so part of this is, is making sure that you guys um, – making sure that you guys understand – way that the design works okay and, and you know what since we're on this i'm going to share uh something that i did for my house with you guys so bear with me for a second so my wife is um is one of those people that cannot visualize space okay and i would draw her things like what i just drew you guys that little sketch this little sketch and she she would look at it and go yeah, I, I can see it's going to be big enough. She she really never um, she was really never able to conceptualize the actual um, mass and volume volume of of the house, and so um, I spent an absorbent amount of time generating. Uh, some visualization. So I'm going to share this with you guys in one second. So let me. Um... So because my wife could not visualize, I actually had to make this rendering for her. And hopefully you guys can. Lana, if you don't mind, can you hit the light switches to the left of the door? Yeah, you can flip them both off. It'll just make it easier to see this in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share with you guys what I created to visualize this for my wife because she really did not, she, she really didn't conceptualize it. So let me hit play on this video. I needed dramatic music, but I didn't do that. So we, we want another child, so we were thinking that our son would be in the back room. But now I will tell you guys that even after this phase of the design, I actually completely changed like where the bathroom was on this side of the house. This is the bunk that I built my kid. Like Literally, that's what he physically has in his room. It's a fort underneath of it.
It's literally the ja- so I actually did a different style of that. He still has a Jack and Jill bathroom. Um, actually, he has the one that I showed you. Um. Well, I want to show before you guys leave. I want to show you this. Okay, so let me do this. I'm gonna pause it right there. So that is what the architectural visualization looked like. You guys want to see what it looks like in reality? That's reality. That's the rendering. Okay, so if it helps you guys understand what you should be seeing, I saw this in my head and was able to make a rendering of that so that I could show my wife because I knew it was going to look like this when we were done. What you guys don't notice in this picture is about 1.8 seconds after I snapped this picture, I got shot in the face with a Nerf dart because he was taking aim at me and I didn't even know it. So uh, I find that to be a really funny photo. But I'll share with you guys a few more of these tomorrow. Um, you guys are good to go at home or good to go from my in class. And uh, I want to answer a couple questions here. Um... Elijah, yes, unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, that could be true. Um, and uh, also, Elijah, to answer your question there, the, the video, and I'll finish playing that for you guys, since I know you guys don't need to leave quite yet. Uh, yeah, if you don't mind, that would be great. Bye, see you guys. Thank you, Alana. Have a great day, guys. Um, yeah, Nick. So my mom emailed the school about like me coming in to the Arrow for four days a week, but she never heard back. So I was just gonna like, ask you, like, um, you, you know what? I drafted an email to mom or dad. Some, one of your parents emailed me, and I drafted an email. And if I didn't hit send. I must have got sidetracked and forgot to hit send. So let me re make sure I'll reply back to that. I'm going to put that on my do list right now. All right. Yeah. If I'm a mom, because like, yeah, I, I highly doubt my dad did. Okay. Yeah. I, I apologize. Um, I, I drafted it. Bye guys. See ya. Um, hold on. Let me see. Nick email mom. That's all I need to write. And I'll remember. All right. Cool. See you Dave. I'll make sure I get that off today. I know I already wrote the email, but I may, you know, it may have been one of those things that was on my screen and I just didn't hit send and I got busy and did something else. So, all right. Thank you. You're welcome. So guys, that view right there that just hit, I want to share with you real quickly. Again, talking about visualization and how like we visualize what we want. So that view right there. This is what it looks like in reality versus what I rendered initially. And you guys got to think, I rendered this three and a half years ago, three three years ago, when I originally designed the house. Um, so there, there's the view and there is reality. All right. And then I'll also share with you what I envisioned for the basement. So as we hit the bottom of the steps, and that's what I envisioned. And that is the reality. And then additionally, This little theater room on the left. That's, oh, shoot. That's what I envisioned. And that is reality. So, um, if it, if it, if that kind of helps you understand like how we as as designers uh, take visualization. Um, it, 
that's how deep we we think about our projects and and how much uh, forward thought into what things are going to look like and can there be adjustments? Obviously, there can be adjustments. There there are going to be there are going to be adjustments um, literally the entire way. And oh, I can get rid of this finally. Everybody's gone. All right. So um, there are adjustments in in color, um, locations of walls. Like I, I literally moved a couple walls um, after they were constructed. I actually had to like uh, modify some things to, to, to change. Like this didn't feel quite the way I wanted them to. Um, and because I spent so much time like going through the design in my head and also seeing the renderings, I was able to pick up on things that, that the contractor actually did a little bit off. Like my framer, he bumped the wall by two inches and, and I remember just walking in going, it doesn't feel right. Like, and it was a hallway and I was like, this doesn't feel right. And I pulled the tape measure, cro crossed it and realized that he was a little bit off. Um, I was able to modify that. So um, th those things are part of what we do. And that's why I having you guys do the design the way that we're doing it. And again, iterations. If you guys thought, if you guys think I got to this design um, first shot, it, that, that's not the case. It, it, this is many, many iterations of going through this design and modifying it and then looking at it and then modifying it again and looking at it, modifying it again and, and doing that literally until I don't want to say I was blue in the face, but you, you do that until until you have have really um, until you're satisfied. I hope that's the right word there. Um, until until it until it feels you hate to use the word perfect, but perfect for us, right? Do we have did I build the biggest house? No, not even close. Did I build uh, what a lot of people would like? No, not even close. Um, you know, our bedrooms, our, our houses only has three bedrooms. That doesn't work for everybody. Most people need four bedrooms. We just didn't. Um, we, we like to entertain and, and have friends over. And, and you've seen that we had a card table and a pool table. Like that's, that's our, that's our friend base and our family base. And we, we, we have our guest over. And so you've got to think about how you're going to live in it. If you're doing a custom home or how your client's going to live in it. If you're doing a custom home for them, if you're doing, uh, what you guys are doing, which is a spec home, you need to think more generalized. How could people live in this home? And and what would those people need? And are you going to check every box for every person? No, that's not the intent of what we call a, a spec home. Um, you guys are, are satisfying the masses. You're not ever going to make everybody happy. Um, and so you guys are just going to take your time progress through a bunch of sketches, come up with a bunch of ideas. Um, what I will tell you is not allowed to throw away any idea. Like physically, if you draw it on a piece of paper, you're not allowed to throw it away. Uh, suggestion to you, date and number your sketches so that you can, and you may even want to time stamp. So if you say, I drew this at 845, that way you know the next one was drawn after. Um, and you'll know how much time is has gone between these. Because if you, you may find out that your, your best designs don't come until the second day you've worked on it after you've kind of had time to sleep on it. Um, when you're doing this professionally, you, you vest a lot of energy in, in your designs and, and your outcomes. And so as you're, as you're designing, you'll, you'll, you'll literally think about it like constantly. And you'll you'll look at a magazine and go, that, that would work great in my application if I just modified this and this. Um, I told you guys that, or at least I think I told you guys, I know I've told my seniors, I actually have a sketch pad on my nightstand, um, literally right next to my head where I sleep. Only because when I'm doing design work, I, I literally may dream of a solution. And I'll wake up in the middle of the night and I'll reach over and I'll just sketch what I was thinking and I'll go right back to sleep. Um, and so th th those are mechanisms that have worked for me as far as management is concerned. Um, so 
Uh, I want to answer Elijah's question. How long did it take to create this two minute and 26 second long set? Uh, two minute and 26 second long video. Render it to this quality, which is technically considered high def. I want to say it took like 27, 28 hours to render it. Like literally a full, full day of my computer just sitting there grinding one you can think about it like one film strip frame at a time it literally just sat there and, and grind it away all right so let me do this let me open up the floor for any um for any questions first off does anybody have anything that they'd like to ask or, or just even make a statement about Okay, um, let me ask you a question and hopefully get a few of you guys to respond. Um, does, and, and help me help you guys, does me showing you my process on a piece of paper, um, does that help you guys in any way to see how I would process this same problem? Um, very cool, very cool. Okay, uh, and lastly, does um, and, and I hope I said I hope this comes across right. Does any of this, like I showed you the renderings and and you know pictures of what reality looks like. Um, so let me just put a little spacer in here so I know where the where the answers changed. Um. Seeing those sort of like videos and, and seeing the pictures and things like that, does that excite you to, to the profession or does that, that frighten you in a sense to, to kind of hear, you know, how I, I want to say how deep it actually goes? Very cool. Both honestly. I love it. No, no, I mean, I, I think, you know, I, I had a really, so, so I had a really good uh, high school drafting teacher. Um, and when I was a kid, it wasn't architecture. It was, um, it was literally called drafting. Um, and we would draw everything from, from sprockets to widgets to gears houses and and that's what we did for our first year and a half I, I i'm going back 25 years um the first year and a half was basic drafting we, we learned how to board draft uh you guys got to think back on I'm, I'm at the age where where ad was just really starting to, to take its place in the market uh, there were still firms uh, that were hand drafting full time, not even using computers. And so um, I, I took a class that, that we learned how to do board drawing, hand drafting like you guys have done. And I learned some of the, the CAD. Um, and I'll be honest with you, even 25 years ago, I was using AutoCAD. Um, so during that class, I, I found myself being really interested in the architecture side, where a lot of my friends in the class, they, they found themselves uh, being more interested in the mechanical side, which was more of the uh, machining side of, of the industry. And uh, midway through our second year, we were asked to make a choice whether we wanted to go on the engineering pathway or if we wanted to go on to the architectural pathway. And obviously, you guys know which pathway I chose. Um, we had about 15 students in the class, and I think uh, five of us chose architecture and 10 of them chose the mechanical side. Um, and so we had a very small little cohort of uh, students that went down the, the architectural side. And um, I actually started working for a firm and we were looking for people and I actually ended up um, having my, my firm hire one of my old classmates and we actually worked together at the same firm for 
13, 14 years together. Um, so you, you, you will, you're, you're going to find those things, um, that spark your interest and pique your interest. And, um, you know, I, I, I think, I hope I'm trying to think what, what high school me would feel. And I feel like if I had these sort of experiences, I, I, I would be more inclined to appreciate the industry rather than, again, I can give you guys books that, that, exist that say, you know, what it is to be an architect. Um, and I'm not sure that gives you that same, same emotion in a sense. Um, so anyways, guys, it is nine o'clock and I'm going to tell you guys to have a beautiful day. Um, I think the weather's supposed to be nice today. So enjoy a little bit of that if you can get out. And somebody asked if I saw their email and I have not yet. It doesn't mean I didn't. I mean, I won't today, but I will try to get to that. See you, Nick. You're welcome. I'll see you guys. Have a great day, everyone. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Have you submitted those? Okay, perfect. I, I'm going to try to catch up on grading either today or tomorrow. Perfect. You have a great day. Thank you. See ya. Hey, Kevin, you good? That's all right. You all good? So we were, oh, hold on a second. Let me, um, let me hit my stop recording thing real quick so that I can.